Attractiveness versus attraction are two different things. Many, if not most people, confuse attractiveness with attraction with dire consequences. Now, though there is some overlap, attractiveness is more about healthy traits, while attraction is an intangible and irresistible pull towards someone. If you rely on attraction, it can lead you into a toxic relationship with a hot mess and you could be left licking your wounds for years. And that's not the fun kind of licking you're looking for. <laughs> if you're new to my channel, my name is Anna Jorgensen. I help men decode modern women so you can find, attract and keep your keeper or simply have better relationships with women. My videos are for you if you're ready, willing, and wanting to take charge of changing your life. Welcome to Just The Tip. So today's inspiration comes from John, a former approach coach who now works as a corporate consultant and wishes to remain anonymous. Let's look at attractiveness versus attraction. Although they are symbiotic, attractiveness can be likened to a curated list of desirable traits that are specific to your ideal deal makers. These are qualities your logical mind knows you need in a mate for a healthy relationship. Attractiveness is about rational features and benefits. <laughs> Some attractiveness features are universal, like kindness, compassion, trustworthiness, and reliability. There are also some physical features most people agree are also attractive, like general symmetry and clear skin and other markers of good health. However, to others, physically attractive traits can be subjective based on your cultural or individual preferences, like blonde hair, blue eyed girl next door, or maybe you're into the raven haired, onyx eyes, voluptuous, whatever, or whatever you secretly long for. On the other hand, attraction is how deeply you are drawn to someone regardless of any pre-qualifying list your brain deems important. These qualities are sometimes impossible to articulate and can be based solely on someone's physicality or they can emerge from the chemistry you share or an inexplicable electric energy between you that you both feel. Attraction and desire can transcend space, culture, or even language, and is often felt a bit lower in your body than your brain, as in your heart, you naughty people. Okay, so attraction is why bad boys can get good girls, but not necessarily keep them and why overly attentive, nice guys all too often get disqualified and friend zoned. Attraction is about irrational features and benefits. All right, the benefits of both. However, if you have the combination of attractiveness and attraction, you can get and keep your keeper. Attraction is about attracting. You never see a magnet hurtling itself through space to chase a nail, just like you should not chase tail. <laughs> so how do you create attraction? Well, you be attractive. Now, before you click away, stick with me. Here's what John and I mean. You're not necessarily handsome, but you are well put together. You're not rich, but you are financially responsible. You're definitely not a bad boy but you are confident and assertive. And you're not overly stubborn, but you are overtly steadfast. Now notice that none of these character traits cost a dime. Now you might be thinking, but Anna, John, what can I do to attract women? Well, first work on yourself and your life where you know you need to. If you don't know where to get started, then get my Wake Up To Love program and do the work. Now with her, you're gonna drop all the games. If you want the dames, drop the games. Instead, give her a sincere and confident compliment. Be kind. Connect emotionally, not just experientially, by focusing on the why behind the what. Example, the what. She likes hiking. The why. She feels closer to God's majesty. Women are emotional creatures who love all the feels, so you want to tap into her emotions by going deeper than the surface level stuff. Let's look at a few examples to make it more clear. Surface level questions. The what. What do you do for work? What kind of music do you like? What's your favorite way to spend a weekend? Or what's your favorite uh, travel destination? Or what's your go-to comfort food? Ah, deeper questions. The why. Why did you choose your current career path? Why does that genre of music resonate with you? Why do you prioritize your weekends the way you do? 
Or why does that particular place hold so much appeal to you or sentimentality? Or why do you find comfort in that specific food? Now, you may not want to ask the question in the why format, why do you do this? You could soften it up by saying, what is it about blah, blah, blah that makes you feel or that, you know, turns you on or that gives you passion or excites you or ignites you or inspires you, that sort of thing. You get the point. So the surface level questions help break the ice and keep the conversation light, while the deeper ones reveal more about her values, experiences, and what truly drives her. Then actually listen with curiosity for the deeper meaning of her answer. You may not know what it is. She may not even know. So it could be something you can explore together. Now these deeper conversations build connection and are a sign of attractiveness because it signals to her that you're attracted to her more than just her physical body. Avoid moving ahead to the next question without exploring the current topic or you will sound like an interviewer, not a potential romantic partner. Now, if you don't get to some of the other questions you may have wanted to ask, well, that's great. It means the conversation unfolded organically and authentically, and you'll have plenty of time to discover more about each other later. Now I hear you saying, Anna, I will get friend zoned so fast it will make your head spin. Well, that's part of where balance comes in. You want to pursue without chasing. You can watch my video on pursuing versus chasing after this. It'll be coming up after this video. For now, know that women need to be pursued and not chased. In fact, women enjoy chasing you. They don't just enjoy it, they need it. They need the challenge to prove their worth to you. They like the excitement, but even more so, psychologically, it proves you have standards. Do the kind of women you desire for a long-term relationship want a man who has low standards or even no standards? Probably not. She subconsciously knows if she can get past your moat, it builds well for both of you because she's proven her worth to you and in doing so, you have proven your worth to her. Key point, women mirror your feelings about yourself. At the same time, if she's emotionally healthy, like the kind of woman I assume you want, she also needs to know you desire her. What's the wing ma'am motto? Always leave them wanting more, but how does it go? Give them enough to want more. That's right. <laughs> if you're aloof or act disinterested, her feelings about you will veer away from intrigue and attraction. And if she is a keeper, it won't be long before some other good man is making it clear he does want her. This happened to a friend of mine not very long ago, and I actually shared this in another video. She was trying to make plans with a guy, but he was taking days to reply without any explanation. And always avoided committing to plans with her. She met another guy who showed genuine interest without being, in her words, creepy or desperate, and she went on a date with him. Unfortunately, his profile photos were about 30 years old. That is not authentic. Lead with your true self. Don't bait and switch. It won't work out for you. Anyways, moving on. Of course, if you're too available or eager, you will turn her off because that comes across as you having low value and no standards and she can't respect that. Key point, respect precedes attraction. She can't respect you if you can't respect you. There's no good woman out there that you want who says, I think I want a guy who's low value with no standards. Yeah, someone I can't respect. Now I know it is confusing, so let's simplify it. If you take nothing else away from this video, other than it rains a lot here, take this. The best way to not come across as overly eager is to have standards, know your deal breakers and must haves, and key point, have a life with some priorities that force you to say no to her sometimes. Having some non-relationship priorities also makes you more interesting. You wanna be there for her, just not at the expense of yourself or your priorities, with the exception of the three Ds situations, like death, disease, or disaster. Now, if that's the case, you can show up as her knight in shining armor, or amour. However, be careful in this situation, because if she bonds with you during a personal crisis, it can feel like falling in love, when really, it's her feeling rescued and you feeling like a hero. To avoid situation-based 
attraction only, no foundation heartbreak, go back to your attractiveness list, your deal breakers and deal makers. Now, if your values, beliefs, and goals don't align and you have nothing in common, you're going to be in for a rough ride that may not last and may simply be masked by the situation or physical attraction. Okay, so I was interrupted by somebody and now I'm filming here with this old cat. This cat is over 21 years old. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so I know there was a lot in this short video. And remember, it takes time to learn new information. So don't beat yourself up for not remembering everything you think you need to know the first time you hear it. You may want to watch this video again and choose one idea to work with. Maybe it's practicing listening and asking deeper follow-up questions. Now, if you practice with anyone you chat with, it'll become a habit and much easier for when it actually does count. And if you do want a step-by-step -step guide for how how to fix your life where you need to, including how to figure out what to do first, consider getting my Wake Up to Love program. There is a money back guarantee, so there's absolutely no risk to you. Now be sure to watch my video on chasing versus pursuing coming up next. I believe in you. I'm sending you so much love. A big thank you to John as well, and God bless. This cat is so old. I love this cat. That's my sweater.